On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a rundown of the notable catches from around the island. We are getting word that tuna have showed up in the area. Fluke fishing continues to be strong and our correspondents check in from around the island all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. This week we're coming to you from East Shore Marine down here in Lindenhurst, their Long Island's new authorized contender boat dealer. For the fishing, hope you took advantage of the great weather and extended holiday weekend. I know I did, more on that later. Just one more news item, demo is closed. This just in, we just got breaking news that Democrat Point is now open for four-wheel drive access. The July glossy issue is out now, along with this week's digital edition. Another good reason to be a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine is that you're automatically entered into the Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a center console from Steigercraft, powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks gets you 12 glossy issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. It's the best deal going out there on the water. Now let's get to the 2023 Dreamboat Challenge update. This week we had four fluke hit the top 10. Ciro Tedisco of West Babylon, New York started the bidding with this 7.26 pounder landing him in ninth place. Laurie Crinchin of Holtzville, New York had this awesome 8.8 .8 pounder that was good enough for seventh place. John Wallace from Cobalt, Connecticut stands in sixth place with this flatfish that weighed in at nine pounds even. And the biggest fluke of the week belongs to Michael Carbone of Berlin, New Jersey. This fourth place beast weighed in at 10.25 pounds. The most important fish of the week was this 15.52 pound third place bluefish caught by Bobby Cifarelli of Branford, Connecticut. This gator bluefish launches Bobby into the lead spot in the contest. The top three looks like this. Luke Citrarelli drops to third place with 18 points. Eddie Terrabile falls into second place with 21 points. And Bobby Cifarelli leads the world with 25 overall points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. ICAST 2023 is coming up next week down in Florida, and I will be there covering the latest in tackle and gear for the fishermen. Media coordinator Jenny Ackerman has more details on what to expect next week. Hey everyone, Jenny here. Welcome back to Open Boat. And today I'm gonna to be talking about something a little further south from our normal waters. It's called ICAST. It's in Orlando, Florida, and it's from July 11th to the 14th. And ICAST is the premier trade show where companies reveal their latest products and showcase new products to their target audience Fishermen like you. Fisherman Magazine crew will be there to give you viewers the inside scoop on the biggest sports fishing trade show. Come along with the Fisherman crew, check out the exhibit, meet with sponsors, and report on new products in the showcase. Comment down below to see what products you want to see the Fisherman Magazine show off at the iCast showcase. It could be a new reel, a new trolling motor, give me anything. Personally, I want to see what new lures the companies have come out with because clearly I, I don't have enough. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now let's get to the upcoming events. Last week we mentioned the Balloons for Sharks competition. For more on this unique tournament, here's Rebecca Rogers. Hi Matt, I'm sure most of your viewers know the problem balloons cause on our waterway and on our beaches. So the South Forks Natural History Museum's Shark Research Program has started an annual fundraiser to catch balloons and support shark research. And you can win a trip for two, catching and tagging sharks on the boat in the 2024 field season. All you have to do is download the Fish Donkey app and search Balloons for Sharks and donate. Once you find balloons, take a picture in the app of your catch and the person who finds the most balloons in the month of July will win a trip. 
but anyone who donates, even if you don't find any balloons, will be entered into a drawing to win a trip on the boat as well. Last year, participants found almost 3,000 balloons and threw them away. So we hope you'll help us support Shark Research and clean our beaches. If you have any questions, please email balloons at sofo.org. Raritan Bay Anglers Club is holding their fluke tournament on July 8th. Hampton Bay's fluke tournament is also on July 8th. Then on July 13th, Town of Islip holds their second free freshwater clinic. Only 25 spots are available, so act fast. July 15th is the Quorum Fire Department fluke tournament. Also on the 15th is the fourth annual Freeport Tuna Club fluke shootout. One more for you, the 15th is the Montour Grand Slam fishing tournament. Lastly, on the 22nd is the Grand Prix Saviano Memorial Fluke Tournament. For all the details, visit thefisherman.com slash events. Let's go around the island with some recent notable catches. We'll start off the week with a personal report of mine over the holiday weekend. I got out on the Hampton Lady on one of their evening trips inside Shinnecock Bay for a pick of fluke on light tackle. For those of you who have read some of my fluke articles before, you'll know that I do love using fish bites and that's exactly what I had them on. White grubs on white jig heads did well for me and I netted myself two keepers to four pounds among a bunch of shorts. Now out on the East End, sea bassing, despite the 16 and a half inch size limit, saw productivity with some larger ones being caught on the rocky bottom south of the point with no shortage of jumbo porgies mixed in. Fluke fishing continuously has been getting better over the course of the week with some quality. Keeper, keeper wise, they're starting to hit the decks as well. The jumbos have not come out to play yet, but they should in due time. Bluefish are numerous in the rip still and almost making it tough to get to the stripers in some cases. With some effort, you could put together a good catch though. Finding a slot with the new regulation that went into effect recently has been a different story. While the boats might be getting their keepers at some point during the course of the trips, they've been going through so many more catch and releases to get to it. The Montauk Boatman and Captain Association has put together a petition asking for more fair regulations for striped bass. If you'd like to sign the petition, visit www.change.weneedbetterstripedbass regs and fill it out. Along the south shore, good options have been either heading offshore for threshers or yellowfin and bluefin if the weather allows for it, or stay in the bay or near the inshore reefs for fluke. If you want to fish after dark, the late night bass trips with live eels have also produced quality action. For fluke action, the West Channel area was red hot this week as well as in Narrows to buoy 14 and 15 in Mauritius Bay. Anglers scored well using smaller bucktails in pink tip with gulp or spearing. Field editor Tom Melton got out this week with Rich from Dick's Bait and Tackle inside Mauritius Bay. They managed some keeper fluke for their efforts. Other boats in the Mauritius and Fire Island area are still seeing a pick of fluke to six pounds with enough, enough shorts and keepers in the mix to keep it interesting. On the West End, fluke rebounded nicely. The action is still better in the bay due to the warm temperatures that hit 70 degrees. You have many areas to choose from that include the Meadowbrook Bridge, Reynolds Channel, Swift Creek, the McAllister, also the Cholera and the Hempstead Reef are another couple of good spots. To the west you could try Coney Island Flats, the Ambrose Channel, Fish Bites, Gulp, Spearing Squid, Killies are all scoring well for the fluke. Fish to six pounds have been taken and private boats are averaging two to three keepers per angler. Bass action has slowed down especially at local bridges. Along the North Shore, striper fishing is showing signs of fading as summer rolls in at full strength. And in addition, the bluefish have been making it difficult to get through to the bass. Sharpies are having no problem catching plenty of bass with many of oversized fish and enough slot fish to bring home still. Jumbo bluefish, for the most part, have been crazy good just about any way you drop a line in the sound. For anglers looking for a cocktail blue, a good eating size, you may want to fish inside Huntington Bay from the docks or anywhere you see the turns working. Fluke fishing has been spotty with some anglers finding easy limits, 
While others are struggling to find a keeper, sea bass fishing has been fair to good depending on where you fish. Porgy fishing remains excellent at just about any of the rocky reefs or local rock piles inside the bays and harbors. Also, for those of you following along with the Surf Rats Bowl event, this past week saw a bit of an exciting change to the leaderboard, and it all came by accident for Dan Rosario, who is actually fluke fishing around a South Shore inlet with a quarter ounce jig tipped with a soft plastic. Dan hooked into a monster striper that ended up weighing 53 pounds after a battle and with a little camera help from someone passing by. Dan got the photo with the tournament tag in the shot and claimed first for the 2023 contest. Well done, Dan. This tournament, the tournament barbecue will be held on the 15th at Captree Bait and Tackle. Now let's get an angler's weather forecast with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin, who has had a good week with the fluke, up to 7 pounds, 27 inches. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's uh, check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got as we get closer. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So one attempts, yeah, really uh, going up. A lot of 70s now, looking more like that midsummer feel and, uh, you know, some of that warm water. Starting to come in from the south. It looks like the weekend uh, is going to be decent, two to four feet overall throughout the ocean. The sound one to two. The bays are okay. A little south breeze. There'll be that onshore sea breeze in the afternoon. We'll chop things up after about one, two o'clock. Fairly typical for midsummer, but looks okay. Some clouds, maybe some areas of fog in the area, so watch for that. There could be a couple of showers maybe Saturday evening, Saturday night, but I think for the most part dry. Looks like Sunday, same type of deal. Starts out very calm in the morning, a little onshore breeze in the afternoon, but overall not too bad. Saturday high tides, north shore for the uh, very early morning, late afternoon, south shore for about midday. High temps Saturday, 70s, 80s, uh, a lot of humidity in the air for both days. Let's uh, check out the, uh, the guru, get a little different look here as we look at Saturday. And uh, for the most part, it looks good. You know, I mean, here's the day. Not much wind, you know, until the afternoon. I think, you know, a little onshore late in the day, but it looks pretty decent. Here's Sunday, and again, same type of deal here, you know, south-southeast, a little more of a breeze late in the afternoon towards about 2, 3 p.m., but overall, I think we're looking uh, pretty good. So overall, nice-looking uh, July weekend coming up. Enjoy. Be safe as always. Catch them up. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings everybody from Montauk. Happy 4th of July. I hope everybody enjoyed July 4th. Gonna keep it short and sleep, sweet because I was fishing and watching fireworks and it's just kind of getting this reported in the last minute. Tuna, fluke, sea bass, all those things are definitely starting to fire on all cylinders out here. A couple guys have been working inshore for some nice blue fins and then a couple guys are going out to the canyon. So a couple guys working on giants. Um, I went to Block Island, limited out on sea bass, uh, 16 and a half inches. Jeez, big fish. A lot of, uh, lot of stuff going back over to get those 16 and a half inches, but that's what we got to do. And they're much better for the table. All right, everybody, happy 4th of July. Thank you very much. I'll have a more detailed report next week. Thank you, Matt. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. So report this week out of Sag Harbor. Um, you know, the porgy sea bass bite's been really strong as the summer continues. Striped bass bite closer out east towards Montauk, and fluke has also been really good as well. Um, whether that's live bait, artificials, or um, normal bait as well. I mean, all of the above have really been, have been doing it strong for us. Um, and then offshore, the tuna bite's been solid too. Finally, bluefin moving midshore, which we're excited to do. Um, and go after those, and also the canyon as well, picking up. So um, stay tuned, we'll catch you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, tend to have a little bit of a disappointing bass bite going on here. Where's that bunker at? Uh, I was out over the weekend with a buddy, um, and we went down towards like Smith Point Pavilion, found a couple of small pods, snagged a few, got them back to the boat, put them back on circle hooks, and uh, didn't have any luck with bass, but did have a kind of cool surprise of uh, hooking into a, a pretty good-sized brown shark that uh, fought and then safely released. 
so that was good. Uh, Fish Mauritius Inlet as well that day. A lot of a lot of bluefish in there. A couple of bass are around, uh, you know, in the inlets and you know, randomly up front. But without these bunker pods to work, it's uh, kind of tough to really get on a bite. Um, fluke fishing continues to improve, and uh, and not just back in the bay, out in the ocean as well. So that's been uh, pretty good. Sea bass. They're, they're coming up. Hampton Reef has been fairly active. Uh, Hampton Ladies done a number of good trips. Other pieces are producing as well. Uh, some link coming up along with those black sea bass. And um, porky fishing continues to be pretty good both on the reefs and up into the Peconics. So, um, you know, off the beach, been, a, you know, pretty much on the slow side. But, you know, definitely worth soaking a clam belly uh, to get something, to you know, as we approach the summer doldrums. So, I was out of Montauk tonight on Grand Slam Charters. Awesome trip. Steady pick of blues and uh, and. 20 to 31 slot bass, a couple of overs, and uh, just, just a great night. Um, you know, good captain, good crew, so that was uh, pretty exciting stuff. And got my first keeper fluke of the season uh, while uh, working a bucktail uh, before the sun went down. So, uh, fun night. Hopefully this weekend uh, everyone's going to catch some fish. Let us know how you do, and I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hi, Matt. Uh, Fire Island report, fishing is still good, fluke fishing has improved. Uh, I'm catching a number of keepers every day, a few shorts, and uh, more in the back rather than a Fire Island inlet area. I'm fishing anywhere from, let's say, uh, Coast Guard Station all the way back uh, up into West Channel. That seems to be best. So getting a bunch of keepers every day, a few shorts, bluefish also mixed in. And uh, it looks like things are good. Also, first tuna reports by uh, uh, the Bacardi, Texas Tower area. 50-pound yellowfin, of course, in the canyon. Big eye and yellowfin as well. But, hey, that extra 20 miles that's, adds a lot to a trip. Also, just a quick tip here. Now the blowfish are in, you put down a gulp, and the tail is gone in a matter of minutes. So I switch over to Z-Man. Z-Man, they're made of a different material and they're real stretchy and they can't bite through this. They can't rip it off and it catches fluke well. It catches pretty much anything. They come in an assortment of colors, you know, the electric chicken, pink and glow. Uh, and it's a really good substitute now for the gulp. So Z-Man, they got them down here at Trophy Tackle. Uh, that's about it for this week and uh, we'll talk to you next week. From Jones Beach Bait and Tackle and Capture Bait and Tackle and Fuel, we have Brendan Rutigliano. Thanks, Matt. Captree's actually doing pretty well. Lots of fluke and blowfish. That's pretty much everybody's, you know, catching right now. Uh, there's some blue claws around as well. Lots of pregnant ones, so make sure you throw those back. Uh, the, the fleet's doing awesome on sea bass and fluke. The sea bass, it's kind of hard to get to that 16.5, but they're catching them, and, uh, you know, you can get them around the inland as well. But uh, just, you know, you kind of have to work for the sea bass. Uh, as far as Jones goes, there's a lot of small sea bass, uh, some fluke, a couple of bragas mixed in as well, and dogfish. Dogfish are everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and a little offshore report uh, this week. Threshers coming up. Uh, I have four or five friends that went out and everyone got threshers. Uh, even the Patty Ann got a nice thresher that weighed in at the shop. And um, Will King told me about some bluefin. Uh, on jigs about 50 inches plus and it's all southeast from uh, Captree Inlet, uh, Fire Island <laughs> Inlet, and uh, about 150 to 200 feet of water. So get out there, have some fun, and uh, go catch them up guys. See ya. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello Matt. Well, it's very hot, very dry, very stressful on the trout on Long Island. So if you got to fish for trout early in the morning or like or in the evening, but try not to fish during the day. It's just it's just brutal on them right now. Uh, but there is fishing to be had. I'm out here fishing one of the local ponds. Uh, and don't ask me because I'm not going to tell you. And the reason why? Because I'm fishing for carp, and carp are everywhere. And I'm using. I like to target moving fish, feeding fish. I don't like if I see them feeding on bread. Well, I'll use a bread fly, but I prefer not to. I'm actually using this little mop fly soft tackle and they you see them turn on it and come and chase it. Uh, it's been really good. Uh, I love fishing for here. You want to know about all the parks? Stop it at the shop and I'll be more than happy to tell you where you can find carp. 
Uh, as far as uh, uh, salt water, well, it's uh, there's uh, it's blues, 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 and it's also early in the morning or right in the middle of the night. Um, but there are fish out there. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna see some more. Hopefully, the mole crabs are gonna be starting to start up soon. So I'm gonna be on the surf fishing for them. Like I said, I have been fishing for trout guiding. I had two two couples out this week. Um, we did have trout, but land them, heavy tip it, get them in quick, get the pictures, get them back in the water. They're gonna be stressed. So until next week, tie lines, everybody. Let's shake it with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. I hope everyone had a great 4th of July. Hooray for the red, white, and blue fin. I was part of a team this week that caught a blue fin. It was an hour fight on a spinning reel. Uh, and at the end game, the rod snapped in half. Uh, this was on John McMurray's boat, one more cast. Uh, one of the best guys in the game. And he had a mate named Carl that saved the day, who knew exactly what to do, locked down the drag, walked the rod back, reeled in as he walked forward to land uh, this tuna after the rod had snapped. Um, so it's no secret there's a lot of yellowfin and bluefin tuna out there. I can't give uh, exact coordinates and all that because these tuna fishermen are very sensitive, but it's no secret they're out there. Um, also, Kobe are out there. Adrian uh, Bassapil got one. Um, Jumping Mako is offering mahi trips soon. So, uh, you know, these warmer water fish are coming into our waters right now. So it's an exciting time. So get out there and get tight. Thank you and back to you, Matt. Let's check it with David Rogers. Dave. Thank you, Matt. This past week in the Western Sound remains to keep anglers busy. Bass and Blues continue to dominate the bite, taking bait and lures. Bunker Chunkin' at night has been the go-to for catching multiple overslot bass. The bulk of the stripers in the Sound seem to have moved out into deeper waters, and that's where chunking has been most effective. Adult-sized bunker have also moved into deeper waters, while peanut bunker still remain in large numbers in the back bays. Now, in terms of the topwater bite, it has been on fire. Going out at sunrise and throwing a pencil popper has been producing bass and blues of all sizes. When it comes to the fluke, the bite remains to be getting better as the summer progresses, but it has not been as good as it was in previous years. On the other hand, porgy fishing remains to be a great option to bend a rod, and you got a good shot at a jumbo-sized one showing up on the end of your hook. Well. That's all I got for this week's report. And as always, guys, make sure to check out Funky Fishing on YouTube to get a more detailed look into what's biting around the island. Stay groovy, everyone. And back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of Western Sound. It's the first week of July after July 4th. Me and Lauren are gonna head out, fish some of our deeper water reefs, three-way and live bunker. The bass bite's still been good. During the daytime, I would definitely concentrate on some deeper water reefs, diamond jigging, you know, the northwest side of 11B in the deeper parts has been good. We've seen fish up to 30 pounds this week. And then shallow around the oil islands have been good. You know, first light, sunset, and then into the dark. Guys throwing dock lures, you know, swimming plugs, sunset and dusk has been really good. The morning bite's been good. It starts tapering off now. They're starting to get in that summer mode. So usually when the sun's up after the horizon, they'll start slowing down unless you've got an overcast day. And to our west, they're still getting fish on the troll. I would say 32A to Captain's Island in the deeper water part. And then to our east, that middle ground still been hot. Locally, the fluke bite, you know, it, it's, it's not great, but people are getting them. It was good for a week or two and it's starting to slow down a little. So you really got to work the areas. Places like 26, 24, squid spearing is your best bet. And then some gulp, people like fluke bellies, sea robin strips, try it all. If you do catch one, hit a man overboard button to keep pounding that area. The porgy bite's strong, it should just really pick up now as the water's warm inshore. Guys are getting them from the beaches and the piers, and then from the boat or deep and shallow water reefs. Remember, clam chum always brings the fish to the boat and it's a good way to fill your bag limit. And then um, I would say the tuna fishing, you know, it's mostly a troll bite. The dump area, Suffolk has been decent. You know, the guys are getting them first light on the jig around the life, but most people heading out right now are definitely getting them on the troll. And then in the canyons, the dip, West Atlantis, we've seen some really good big eyes this past week. Thanks and good luck. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt Hopewell as well. Well, guys, Mike Sentry here. Well, what can I say? Another week is in the books. Just got back from an offshore trip, and I'm pretty tired, very fatigued. Uh, still feel like I'm rocking in the boat. We hit the uh, offshore grounds for Yellowfin uh, out of New Jersey. 
and we put a SmackDown on them today. Lost quite a few. The tuna today were uh, pretty interesting. Um, we were trolling the uh, Sterling Tackle, Wide Trackers, and Crazy Eights. And the tuna, when they were hitting the bars, they were coming out of the water, which it was something I haven't seen in a long time. And upon inspection, when we uh, dissected their bellies, you know, filleted them, we noticed that they were filled with sand eels. So it's not like they were really hungry, just a very aggressive bite. Um, we had a DTX minnow, I believe it's called, the, um, I believe it's by Nomad. Well, one of my friends was using it, that got hit pretty hard. We believe it was either Mako or a Wahoo, but that got lost. But as far as the uh, yellowfin goes, the bite's pretty much on fire right now. We gotta go out pretty far. So pick your weather windows, and uh, it was Sterling White Trackers, Crazy Eights, and we caught a couple on the Hoagie Harness Jigs. So, not a bad day, but uh, stay tuned. Hopefully by the end of the week, we make another trip out there. And as always, make sure you have safety equipment on your vessel, no matter what size vessel. Make sure you always take care of number one, and that's yourself out there. All right, teamwork makes the dream work, network with guys, and uh, make sure you put a uh, emergency contacts, make sure you have a plan when you go offshore, and I'll leave you with that, guys. Well, good night, see you next week. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And be sure to check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget that this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine Podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. Thanks for watching and we will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com reporting in from iCast in Orlando, Florida.